Hey, you guys. Hi. Happy Monday. Wags Monday today. We are in studio. Uh, Brooke and I, for those of you who know, we have, we're rocking our merch that many of you have bought in support of Wags of SCI date nights. So yep. that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of what you guys have all been waiting for. It is our sex video round two. Yes, and we're super excited to actually share with you guys some of the answers to your questions. Um, we had a, a massive amount of response when we asked you guys what questions you had mm -hmm. in terms of sexual health, SCI, and um, intimacy. Mm -hmm. There were tons of questions around positioning. Um, we had general sex talks. So um, what is intimacy? What does it look like for you and your partner? Um, lots of fertility questions. We had some about medications um, and ejaculating. So. so stay tuned. We're going to answer all of your questions. And we just wanted to give a shout out to Leslie and Shay and the team at i mm -hmm. who took the time to not only meet with us, but to answer most of your questions. Um, and they're just like literally encyclopedias about sex after STI. Um, and we're right. really, really fortunate to have that resource in Vancouver and to be able to share it with you guys and share all the knowledge that they have. Um, mm -hmm. From what they said, there isn't really another I cord resource um, that is directed towards spinal cord, except for in Miami. Um, it's sex and spinal cord. Um, so right. we're really excited to share this information with you. So here we go. So let's get off to it. Okay. So some of the first questions that you guys had was about um, positioning and sex. So we wanted to talk to you guys firstly about um, intimacy. A lot of the time we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and our partners after spinal cord injury in terms of like the physiology of sex, mm -hmm. meaning like the penis, vagina, mm -hmm. you know, the whole thing. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about what it looks like to be intimate. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean, there's different techniques, you know, mm -hmm. open communication, mm -hmm. um, there's massaging. We had, um, one erogenous zone was like the ears, mm -hmm. so massaging the ears, um, snuggling, doing that kind of stuff. And then I think Brooke is going to continue on with. Yeah, just like about intimacy, like we were talking to the ladies at i -Cord and, you know, they were sharing with us that women... <laughs> Um, that have partners with spinal cord injury put so much pressure on the physical act and then the actual mm -hmm. physical act of ejaculation post spinal cord injury. And yeah, like it's super interesting. And it's like we're little detectives trying to make it happen, make it happen. Um, but she said the biggest, well, they said the biggest piece of advice that they have for us women is to kind of take the pressure off um, mm -hmm. and just not focus so much on the physical act of ejaculation, the physical act of like, sex and focus more on foreplay and making yeah. each other happy with communication and finding what works for you and experimenting and just being loving and focusing on that instead of the actual physical act. So once you take that pressure off, it's brain body connection, right? So she said that lots of men have more success um, when the pressure is taken off. And that's not just for spinal cord people. That's for like every everybody, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So um, just be normal. Um, get to know each other sexually in whatever way you can, but take the pressure off. So that was a big piece of advice for, for sure for us anyways. So if you do have any more questions around that and how we can even, I don't know, make you guys like a PDF, a list mm -hmm. of these things, just fire us an email to wings of SCI at gmail.com. Yeah. Cool. Um, so do you want to talk about like, what is this? Oh, sex positions. So. There were quite a few questions regarding sexual positions um, when your partner is a quadriplegic. Um, a lot of you said, I'm tired of being on top. I'm tired of being the cowgirl. So Thigh pain, thigh master. <laughs> yeah, the thigh master. A lot of you were saying that you couldn't walk after. So that could be a good thing, though, right? The strongest inner thighs <laughs> in the world are quad wives. And pairwise. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, so we did want to include, um, we will add these to this video, actually. There is something that's called, uh, I believe it's called like the Liberator, and it's a triangle sort of pillow. So what you would do is, um, I think this is more for paras who have more like 
sorry, paraplegic women who have more upper body strength, um, you would, what you would do is you would lean over mm-hmm. the liberators like a triangle. Mm-hmm. And then that way, again, mm-hmm. you would have like rear mm-hmm. entry mm-hmm. Um, for a sexual position. So mm-hmm. you could do it that way. And you can also do that on your back. So we will yeah. add that to this. Yeah. Um, a lot of, a lot of, um, People, the recommendation was to use pillows, using pillows and blankets to kind of sit yourself up. Because, um, like, we kept asking them, we're like, well, how does a quad go on the, their stomach? How does a quad go on the side? And literally, they're like, you can buy all the different contraptions. But she's yeah. like, from our experience, what works best is tons and tons of pillows and positioning the pillows so that the hips are up, the body's up, but you have more of like of this, if they're on the bottom, like more of this position with pillows under here. Yeah. Um, and then she also recommended for quads a side position, uh, which uh, put them on his side, um, make the area easy to access, and then you guys can both be on your side. So you're he's kind of facing your back um, and then using straps, right? So like yes. canvas straps. Yes, for sure. Canvas straps can help. We were saying that maybe we could use the lift in our room <laughs> to always swing, swing back and forth at each other, but unfortunately that was a no-go. So. No. <laughs> Don't try it at home. Don't try the Hoyer <laughs> lift as a sex swing at home for yourself anyways. Yeah. Um, so, so, but yeah, like straps, like, you know, those rehab straps that you would um, use to like help tie his hands to something. You can, the mm-hmm. canvas ones that are like almost like seatbelt material can be used to put around him and kind of you are facilitating the thrusting. Again, if any of this is vague, just send us an email and yeah. we'll probably do some doodles for you and send it back to you. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest things for us that we love to talk about are devices, sexual devices. Mm-hmm. We brought a couple props here to show you guys, mm-hmm. um, in terms of ejaculating. A lot of you were asking about fertility, how mm-hmm. to collect the, mm-hmm. you know, collect the stuff to take yeah. to the, to the clinic. Um, so we wanted to show you a couple of things that we have here. Yeah. So, props. yeah. So an important thing to know is that, um, it's called electro ejaculation, mm-hmm. um, which is it's medically assisted. So they have a higher powered vibratory device. It varies. Um, you go to a clinic and get it done and basically they facilitate ejaculation for you. If you're having trouble doing that on your partner at home. Um, and so, a lot of people were talking about how do we get pregnant? What's the easiest way? And a lot of you are resorting to IVF because there you don't really know the other methods. Right. Um, so they were saying the first method that you should always try is electro ejaculation. Can be done at home. Can be done in the clinic. Um, they recommended it's called the Miami Project, um, as somewhere in the states where you can go and get that done. Um, so it's a lot less invasive. It doesn't require hormone therapy or anything like that, and it's very simple and. It doesn't need to be sterile. So you practice the technique at home, see if he can do it on his own, and then you would use a 3cc syringe, Mm -hmm. um, put it in a cup, and she said it doesn't need to be sterile at all. No, because the whole concept of that is that the vagina is not sterile, so... I didn't know that, though. I didn't either. I was like, oh my god, this is like special, like, specimen, we got a hazard mask, gloves, everything, but no, so for a lot of you... Who are um, putting a lot of stress and effort onto that? Don't worry. Yeah. Um. Just do the process. Yeah. Just get it done. So after you can actually um, get him to ejaculate, and we'll go into those details after. What you would do is put the specimen into a jar, and mm-hmm. she said just washing it out and drying it is good enough. It can be any sort of cup. Let it sit for a minute so that the semen liquefies, and it can be easier put into the syringe. So then the three cc syringe is a little bit thicker. You can just get those at any drugstore. Um, withdraw and then put into your vagina and lay on your back for 30 minutes. And that's it. And that's it. That's all. It seems so simple, but literally, she's like, we do this all day long. <laughs> People don't know how to ejaculate their partners. The guys don't know how to do it on themselves. So, And a lot of stress, right? A lot of it is, you know, if our brains are feeling pretty, like, wound up with all the stuff we have to do. Mm-hmm. Um, then our bodies might not react the way that we want. So it's just really just kind of setting the mood and just being really chill about it. Yeah. You don't, don't stress yourselves out. And if it doesn't work the first time, there are many other opportunities to try it again, right? Yeah. So and you got to practice. For sure. Practice makes perfect. I'm going to whip out this. Okay, so this was actually recommended to us. It's a wall. It's a wall vibrator. 
So it just is like literally a back massager that's available on Amazon at any drugstore, and it comes with a bunch of attachments. So what they actually do at iCord is they want to increase the frequency of this mm -hmm. um, to make it more powerful. So <laughs> they took theirs to an electrician um, and rewired it to make it more powerful. But that being said, this wall works really well for a lot of people. You may need something more powerful, but she recommends starting with this one. It's about $30. Nice. They have a whole bunch of tips that comes with it, so you can use it I'll for your this. back. You show what you've got As there. well. Definitely, there's, there's ones with heat settings. You don't need to do it on the heat setting. But this one and that one were the two attachments that work best um, for promoting ejaculation. So then this part would, Brooke's going to demonstrate. So this is... What's a penis. <laughs> this is our penis we call James Love. <laughs> James Love. Okay, so this is our penis, um, and we're going to demonstrate how this is done. <laughs> you All right. Open. So you go like this. This is the actual process of what they told us anyways. So you turn it on. Mm -hmm. We don't have it plugged in, but you turn it on. Zzz. And this is where, this is the area of the penis where all the sensory nerves are. Mm -hmm. So what they do in the clinic, and my husband and I have done this before, is like you just go like this, on and off, on and off. This one is probably actually better for this. So you take this tip and you just massage it gently around this area. And you look out for AD symptoms, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. That's a big one. Make sure they're not going into AD. Have your blood pressure cuff around if they've never done it before. Yeah. Ask him if he's having head pain. If he's not, what they say is normal is to have like almost like bladder spasms, um, <laughs> pelvic spasms happening. Mm -hmm. And that's a good sign. So they say once those spasms in the like bladder, lower pelvic region start happening, that's a good sign. So you want to put, do it on and off, on and off, and just experiment as to what works. But keep going through. They might have a little bit of a headache, but as long as the blood pressure is fine, um, just keep going. And then see what happens. It's all about experimentation. Right, for sure. So right here, um, this one. the next one that we have is actually called James Love. <laughs> so this is a back massager. Literally, I have these, I have used this to massage my back from all the lifting and transferring your partner. Dual, dual purpose. Yeah, dual purpose. Um, actually, my boyfriend Dan ordered this for himself for his birthday last mm -hmm. year. So the strength of this guy, so this is what it looks like. Literally a back massager. It's easy for quads to use too if they have yes. some grip, right? Yes, and it's wide enough that you're not like fiddling around with like a little piece of equipment or yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but you would take this, you would put it in the region underneath, <laughs> underneath on there, and off, on and off, all over, right? You don't want to. Maybe so, she said like thirty seconds at a time max. Right. Just keep doing that and see and, how he feels. And, and some of these are really, really, really powerful. Like when you get the medical grade, um, they're strong enough to literally like yeah. put a hole in the concrete. So, But the reason she said that back massages are good, she says the Hitachi Magic Wand as well is kind of, it kind of looks like that, but it's, it's similar. You can buy them for cheap on Amazon, but the back massagers are more powerful. And that w that's what is needed. You mm -hmm. need a really, really strong stimulation right. uh, because some a lot of the time vibrators like this, which are designed for sexual purposes, they're not strong enough. They don't have the same level of vibration as a back massager does. So as long as you're being safe about it and watching for AD, right. go for the back massager, go for the magic wand. And if you have it in your budget, obviously the fur to care is the medical strength one, but which... those are like 12000 12, Twelve hundred dollars. Um, well, really so knows. nobody can really afford that unless you've tried everything. So start right. off with cheap, experiment, and try then move strengths, on from that. Little gadgets and things. Um, so I hope that's kind of educational. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're throwing penises and things in the mm -hmm. air here, but in all honesty, um, those are some of the things that we have used that we have had pretty decent yeah. feedback with. So. Yeah. And that's the actual process that we've gone through, but we've also heard from them is the proper yes. technique to facilitate ejaculation. And this is electric ejaculation. They will do it like this in a clinic setting. And it just, it helps to know that if you're trying to get pregnant, you can do this mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. Or if you want spasm, you want your partner to have spasm relief. What, after you yes. eject, 
it's that's, seriously that's actually a really really good thing to bring up um a lot of men that are in hospital pardon me especially when they are still in rehab and you're kind of wondering like i just sustained my spinal cord injury what's happening to my body i um if you're a quadriplegic especially you can't really ejaculate or you can't even masturbate um so there's a lot of stress there but if you can get things like this to help you out that actually helps with spasm relief mm -hmm. so instead of popping all those pills mm -hmm. tr give it a go because the release of the hormones in your body is just release mm -hmm. um can do wonders for our, our brain and body so mm -hmm. i would definitely suggest it as well mm -hmm. it's just a more natural way to manage spasms and it's mm -hmm. natural anyways like you know men do this every day sometimes you know, 10 times a day, able-bodied men. <laughs> so it's We like... don't know those ones, though. <laughs> so it's like, you might as well try it. It's healthy. Um, yeah. We had a lot of questions um, from <clears throat> followers about the length of time mm -hmm. of injury. And he hasn't ejaculated in 10 years or five years. or So she basically said, that the team said that... Um, I think they were wondering if, if, if he was going to explode or something. If his... there's something, Or if it was too late or if the right. sperm count was off. Mm -hmm. there's, there was a lot of questions about that. So she basically said it's never too mm -hmm. late to start doing that. It's natural. It's healthy. It's never too late to try. Um, she also always talks about penile rehab. She's yes. always like, yeah. Are we gonna go Is it true it? that if you don't use it, you lose it? Yeah. Um... Definitely, maybe. Um, so basically, the rule of thumb is penile rehab is trying to do it, trying to engage the muscles, mm -hmm. um, trying to encourage the muscles to have any sort of reaction. Mm -hmm. So if you are trying, you know, masturbation and things, these techniques, um, keep on trying. Keep on try trying many, many times over because you might get a little bit of feedback there. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next time you do it, you might get a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So it's literally like therapy for your penis. Mm -hmm. So um, all the women actually that we that we interviewed from the sexual health clinicians from i -Cord said, keep on trying. It's like an active, it's like rehab that you would do for your hands and your body. It's like any kind of like phys physiotherapy or anything. So penis is a muscle that needs to be retrained. Mm -hmm. So definitely keep at it. And then she also said that there's no research behind getting function or feeling back from doing this. But she said you may be able to feel stuff that you've never felt before with continuous mm -hmm penis training um so she said it's just it's important like working another muscle mm -hmm. it's something that should be factored into your routine so i got our little bag of tricks here and i wanted to show you this is what they recommend and these are available at sex toy boutiques online but they're also available through your medical supply distributor so this is this <laughs> it looks pretty thing. intense here it's use, like use the penis to show uh, <laughs> Anyway, so this is a penis pump, and it's not the Austin Powers kind. Is this, this is the medical what kind. Yes. So let's just pretend this guy was flaccid and not fully hard. This is actually what. Sorry. <laughs> this is actually what happens when it is fully hard in the vacuum tube. So what you do is just pretend like it's flaccid. You put first of all, Ooh. you put some lubricant around the inside, this gray part here. That's probably a good idea. So to that start. it pulls, it can pull off easily. And then what you do... So you don't rip the skin off. ...is you take your cock ring, which they usually come with. Right. And put it around here. Oh, okay. Like this. Around the base. Around of the base. the instrument. Yes. Put the penis in. Press it like this until it's, like, quite a good suction. Like... <laughs> until it's blue and purple and it's going to fall no, off? No, not going to fall off, but okay. it'll be, like, very, like, red and purple which is normal. So then what you do is you take this and voila, it's magic. There you go. So then you take it out. Oh, oops. <laughs> then you take it out and it should sustain whatever blood flow you've put into there. Now don't get discouraged if it doesn't sustain like a super hard on mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. It's all about practicing over time, figuring out how much you have to pump. You may have to do it more than once, but this is just an example of penile rehab. And again, this is available through your medical supply distributor. Awesome. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because she's like, this is an awesome powers <laughs> machinery we've got going on here. It kind of does it look is. like that a little bit, um, but 
you know, the cool thing about all these devices um, is is being able to practice these things at home in the comfort of your home yeah. with your partner yes. who hopefully you feel comfortable with and yeah. who loves you and you love um, instead of having to go to the hospital and doing like a very medical sort of setting with, you know, the gloves, and sh- which is another option, of course, for fertility um, for, you know, retrieval. Yeah. But try these things mm-hmm. um, while you're at home when you're in the comfort of your own home. Yeah. You know, have a little... A lot less pressure. Have a little tea, relax, Mm -hmm. set the mood. And yeah, definitely a lot less pressure. So They also were saying that it's really, really important to set the mood. um, Because it's just, it probably won't happen. Right away. An erection probably might not not even happen if you're not in the right mood. Because the guys, they just get frustrated. You get Mm -hmm. frustrated. Mm -hmm. So make sure, you know, you do your catheter. You set up with some music playing. Set the mood and really, like, look after you know, being in connection with each other and then try and experiment because you're more apt to have something cool happen. Um, And our brains can get kind of, they can kind of present a little bit of blockage between that too, so. Yeah, so there was another couple of questions about um, having sex Sex. with a Foley. Yeah. So um, this is actually something that was very new to us. So thank you for this question um, from whoever sent that in. Um, so we, we were really intrigued to learn more mm-hmm. about this. And so here we have a Foley, an intermittent catheter, no, an indwelling catheter. So basically it's for guys that have the indwelling catheter all the time. Um, and our viewers were asking, or our, um, yeah, our Instagram followers were asking if it's possible to have sex with an indwelling catheter. And yes, it is. Wait, doesn't it go <clears throat> like that? I don't know. I'm not sure which way. Sorry, neither. No, yeah, we. Neither our partners use this, so um, I'm not entirely We're sure. We're just reporting. So this is what they look like. So what she said was. Right. Yeah, you're right. You just go like this. So you fold it over. You can put a condom over top or. Um, a cock ring. Yeah, or a cock ring. The only thing it was, safe. was it is safe. The only thing that I think um, Leslie, our clinical health. Uh, physician was saying is that it might not be a hundred percent comfortable for mm-hmm. the female partner. Yeah, and it just depends how long it is as well. So if it's not long enough with the erection, it might cause some issues. Um, but basically, she just says put the cap on it, yeah. um, and then go to town and experiment. Just put a condom on to make sure that um, it's more comfortable for you. Mm-hmm. Like we asked about the germs and stuff, and she said if you're in a safe relationship, it's not about that. It's about the comfort level. So the condom helps to make it so that it's not uncomfortable for the quad wife or the right, quad wife. Right. Yeah. Which is something really cool that we didn't know. So yeah. or I didn't know. So that was pretty awesome. Um so let's see what else we've got here. Do you want to move into like um medications? Yes. Okay. So this is a good one because once again we're always learning. Um education is key. So we are gonna um discuss with you guys you did have some questions around medications um and like Cialis mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the other ones? Viagra, Viagra. Yes. short acting, long acting. It's yeah. crazy. And there's, there's more. Daily doses. Um, for some individuals, these medications actually may not even work. Mm-hmm. So the next step that we have here to show you guys is the needle. So the needle, it sounds intimidating. Um, for a lot of men, they're like, what? I don't really want to put a needle in my penis. That sounds scary. Um, ladies, for those of you who are familiar with Botox, this is what the needle looks it's like. It's like a butterfly needle. It's barely, Sorry. you can barely see it. It's so short. Do you see it? Um, I can barely see it myself. Yeah. There, there it you is. go. There you go. So it's very tiny. Um, Super small. Brooke will demonstrate how much it hurts <gasps> when I put it. No. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But it is very small. <laughs> and so we're going to demonstrate to you. So this is another... Um, Injection that works to, that is going to be delivered straight to the penis that will pump it up, uh, so to speak. So there's a lot of different kinds you can get. Um, my husband and I have tried Trimix, um, but it, again, it depends where you're from, what you get. Your doctor will know what kind. Um, and there's all different strengths. So you can get like just regular, you can get double dose. Just start with the regular, start with your doctor knowing, and they'll teach you how to use the syringe properly. So what you do is you obviously clean the area of the medication, put it in, lift it up to the proper amount, 
take it out of the medication bottle, tap it like this to get the air bubbles out, squeeze it until you don't see any bubbles up here, and then you've got your medication. So then what you do is, there's two valves. One here. On each side. Yeah. So you want to get... So let's say the valve is like literally yes. one side here. Yes. And, and then there's one here. So the valves we're talking about is what um, keeps the penis hard or yeah. will inject the penis. Yeah. It's like the main like valves. Like two. We don't know the actual medical terms because... Because we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We just don't <laughs> There know. is two valves though. And we've been instructed on how to do this. So, and I have done this before. So what you do is you press it here. And let's just say this penis is flaccid. So you press it here, and then this will bubble out a little bit. Make sure you don't hit a, like have a vein that's right there. Make sure it's like in an area that is like skin color. And then you go like this, stick it in, and inject. So once it's done, you take it out, put a little bit of pressure on it to make sure it doesn't bruise. But normally, mm -hmm. because the needle's so small, you won't have the bruising, um, and they will they'll be they'll, they will barely feel it. Um, so once that happens, then you wait about 10 minutes. That's good to know. So wait a few minutes and then? And this can be used, wait a few minutes and then like everyone is different. So the dosage can be different for every guy. Talk to your doctor as always. Um, and just make sure it's right for you and then experiment. So mm -hmm. start with a small amount, see what happens. If it doesn't work, wait 24 hours, try it again with a higher amount. Um, if that doesn't work, wait another 24 hours and then try it again. It's like quite the process, but you got to wait 24 hours in between. Um, just what happens to make if you overdose? I, I'm not sure. Like I, I, I'm not really sure. That's just all we were instructed to do. So I don't know what happens if, if you do. More than don't that. try it at home though. Don't try this at home. Cause some people might think like, Oh yeah, I want like a raging boner for the yeah. next few days. Uh, you might not. Yeah. No, to each their own, I guess, but just be <laughs> careful and talk to your yeah. doctor. Yeah. Um, so that's what, and that's also something cool that you can help assist him with if he's a quad. Mm -hmm. it's, it's cool. Um, this can also be used with combination therapy. Mm -hmm. So um, if you find that these doses aren't enough and they're not sustaining a proper erection for long enough, you can use it with a cock ring. You can use it with Cialis, Viagra, um, short term, long term. So it's all an experimental process. You don't know what's going to work for your partner until you try all these things out. Um, so try the pump, try the cock ring. If that doesn't work, try this Try com combining it with Cialis and Viagra, and if that doesn't work, go to the needle, and then try that combination therapy with all of the above, and awesome. you should have some good results. Awesome. So that's what we have for you right now. Yeah. Um, was there anything else you want to touch base on? Yeah. So we've done the indwelling catheter. We've done all this. Um, so a lot of you were talking about um, healthy sperm um, and to just make sure that it's as healthy as possible. So basically they just said just have a healthy diet, don't smoke, don't drink, and just be healthy like a normal person. Or keep it down to the minimum um, mm -hmm. if you do smoke, because I mean, let's face it, yeah. life, people smoke, people drink. Um, but just, I would say in preparation, if this is something that you're really, really considering is having healthy sperm and conceiving, that's probably a good idea to keep it down to a minimum. Um, take care of yourself, take care of your mind, take care of your body. Mm -hmm. God knows SCI can be yeah. pretty tricky some days, right? Um, so, you know, it's kind of the same thing that they, the yeah. advice that any doctor would give you is take care of your body and your mind as much as possible. They also said put some, um, you make some supply and de demand on your body. So, like, mm -hmm. it helps to ejaculate, she said, even mm -hmm. once a month uh, to help create that supply and demand up and make sure your sperm is flowing well and it's healthy down there. It just She said once a month was good, so... If you can create some supply and your body knows and all this is just as yeah. normal as possible. If you can. And, that, then, yeah. and then you can also get your semen tested. It's worth a shot. It's not very expensive, I know, in the States. And, yeah, it's free in Canada. Um, so let's see what else we have here. I wish we had some kind of like a sex joke to tell you guys for this intermission area, but dun, 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 dun. we don't yet. Maybe. <laughs> Actually, we will be doing a part two. Of this segment. A part two of part two. Part two, part two of sexual health um, for the Reef channel. For yeah. So that'll be happening end of September. So hopefully we'll have some cool, funny, funny yeah. jokes around sex. Huh? Yeah. 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 So the last one is sex and mental health.
Do I get started on that? I mean, <laughs> that's a pretty loaded topic. And yeah. trust me, we get it. Like, sex and mental health, like, I, like we've said repeatedly, when you're still at rehab and you're getting out and you're trying to figure out what your body's functions are, what you've gained, what you've lost, well, more than anything, um, sex may not be always a topic on your mind. And intimacy might not be. You probably want to make sure that you're not having AD, that you're not having UTIs. Um, so the I think the biggest barrier that we have between our bodies and able to even like um, participate in sexual or intimate kind of behaviors is our mind, right? So, Rick, I mean, there's it's a huge topic. It is huge. There is no cookie cutter answer for this. Um, like we've said so many times, practice, you know, maybe practice being grateful for a few things that you do have. Kind of get your mind in a in a state of gratitude. Yeah, gratitude, practice gratitude, things you're thankful for, and then just, you know, just roll with it. Practice makes perfect. Um, we had a lot of questions about how do you get him interested in sex? How do you get him to be interested in talking about it? Because sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, after a spinal cord injury, your partner is not willing to even discuss it because they feel yeah. emasculated. They're either depressed or they or they just feel inferior. That's a huge problem. Um, so mm-hmm. the, the couple things that the lady did say is um, you have to work on communication. And if that means going and getting a third party and a qualified counselor, then do that. And if he's not interested in going, you go on your own yeah. because they will give you tools and techniques on how to deal with someone who is depressed and emasculated and sad. And yeah. it's not your fault. You have to keep telling yourself that it's not your fault, but you can get proper tools on how to deal with this um, and get him interested in that. And then mm-hmm. it's a process. It's a slow process and a lot you know all men are different right depending on their injury levels or where they are in life it doesn't matter it's just about working on communication Mm -hmm. um so yeah like she said go on your own um to a therapist knowledge is power right education knowledge is power um it's really good to have like a little tool belt of tools Mm -hmm. literally so you know Mm -hmm. so you have something to work with the worst thing you can do is is not do anything Mm -hmm. and stay stuck and just stay stagnant and Mm -hmm. not you yeah. know, I mean, if you guys ever do have any questions or need yeah. any support um, from your legs, we're always here to that we could maybe like send you some PDFs or some links to mm-hmm. more information around sexual health yeah. that we might have ourselves too. Yeah. And just so they were just emphasizing getting to a place where mm-hmm. you can feel free to communicate with your partner yeah. and not feel like you're walking on eggshells. Because a lot of the times mm-hmm. when it comes to like the sensitive subjects, we all feel like we are walking on eggshells. And you don't want to have that because communication is literally yeah. the number one thing in our lifestyle that has to be on point or else it's really tough. So, or else you're off point. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we had it. And yeah. we also had a lot of questions about women who themselves, because it takes so much time and effort to get the sex thing going like say you decide you're gonna have sex before bed it's like you gotta do the catheters and you gotta get them into bed and then you gotta roll them and position them and do this and then by the time that's done it's like we're all (laughs) exhausted i need to go to bed we're all like super exhausted and like it's just yeah so she basically said um take the pressure off get into bed get into bed early make that time so that you have extra time yeah Um, listen to some music that you really like um get the mood after that and just relax and if it doesn't happen don't give yourself a hard time if it doesn't, if it doesn't happen, happen then you just do something else have snacks ready in bed yeah that's what we do snacks in bed totally totally um so then we had a lot of questions about resources yes so <clears throat> like what doctor would so, you go to to start this process yes exactly so somebody had a question regarding what position you'd be able to see in your area if you needed any more information about any of this kind of stuff um we wanted to tell you guys to try and talk to any physician any sci doctor there is also a doctor called the urologist i think many of you are familiar with them mm-hmm. considering that you have an sci um physiatrist a physiatrist start with your gp but she did say that a lot of men have mm-hmm. issues and couples have issues with their gps because they're not experienced with spinal cord right. so if your gp is just like drawing blanks as to like where to start ask to be referred to a urologist or a physiatrist and they'll have more resources on where to start um we know our friends in the states it's, mm-hmm. it's a bit different um, mm-hmm. because it's a private medical system so there are 
money issues involved and people pushing product that may not necessarily be um, the right thing for 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 you. But just keep that in mind and, and just make sure you explore all your options before you get into yeah you know whatever you're gonna do for your sex life. But yeah, physiatrist. Uh, urologist, she said urologists are probably one of the better options because right. they deal with down there, and most guys with SCI have access to that right. already. Um, All right. So yeah, and we're gonna post a website at the end of this video, SCI Sexual Health. Yes. Dot CA. It's a Canadian website. Yes. And it's full of juicy, juicy information. Honestly, mm -hmm. we Tons. wish we would have come across it sooner and shared it with you guys sooner. Um, but yes, yeah, so like Brooke said, it is a Canadian website. Um, so make sure that you put in .ca at the end of it. Yeah, so um, we'll put it at the bottom of the screen and you can get all of your physician documents. Everything that's out there about sexual health is on that website. So make sure you check it out. And of course, uh, send us back any feedback, any more questions you have regarding anything, literally. Um, our website and our, sorry, our website is www.wegsofsci.com. And then our email is wegsofsci at gmail.com. Perfect. So, so we're looking forward to hearing from you. Um, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, we know a lot of you want to talk about sex, but there's just not the right time ever. So we hope we yeah. helped at least one person with this video. Awesome. Thank you Cheers. again. Signing off.